president pumped or did he actually make a pragmatic decision? The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Listen, uh, we've been hypercritical of uh, President Donald Trump here at, uh, at this particular location on your dial for uh, quite some time, even as a campaigner. But I'm not so sure that, uh, you know, he didn't do a smart thing here and put Congress in the middle of this decision on deferred action for childhood arrivals. It is something that uh, was impossible with a Republican uh, Congress and a Democratic president. And now that they're all in the same party, sort of, uh, there's got to be some kind of legislative solution. Welcome in. Nice to have you aboard on My State of Mind. Senator Lou Reptakis is my guest tonight. Uh, Lou always comes with a fury on, on issues that are important to him, and they're generally pretty practical things, and so I'll get his take on this. But uh, there's all sorts of things, standardizing the school year, uh, what we do when kids are left in cars, the minimum wage standardization. These are all things that are in Lou's back pocket. Uh, and things that I think the General Assembly ought to be paying attention to. We'll also get us take on what's happening with the Paw Sox deal because that is the, uh, I don't know, the dangling participle significantly for the General Assembly this year. Uh, here's a headline, you know, from over the weekend, the president was thinking uh, about this and, and trying to figure out a solution. Then he sent out the Attorney General today uh, for an announcement on what is kind of a six-month delay of a decision to end this program. Here's the latest that CBS had at midday. The Trump administration is canceling a program which allowed undocumented immigrants brought to America as children to stay and work legally. The Department of Homeland Security should begin an orderly lawful wind down, including the cancellation of the memo that authorized this program. An estimated 800,000 DACA recipients are given work permits which last for two years. The administration will phase out the program by allowing current permits to expire. Requests for new permits, which have already been submitted, will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. It also denied jobs to hundreds of thousands of Americans by allowing those same illegal aliens to take those jobs. Protesters demonstrated against the president's decision outside the White House. For many months, he had been telling us, I love the dreamers. You remember that? He's a liar. President Obama implemented DACA five years ago with an executive action, but the Trump administration argued that the program is unconstitutional and the president is pushing Congress for legislation. The president tweeted this morning, Congress, get ready to do your job, DACA. Joe House Speaker Paul Ryan has said something needs to be done for DACA recipients, and 18 Republicans have co-sponsored a bill from Florida Representative Carlos Corbello that would make a version of DACA permanent. But other Republicans are considering tying a DACA fix with funding for President Trump's border wall, something that would jeopardize Democratic support. Yeah, that would be a mess. That would be a mess. But the idea that the president's kind of pushed this on a Congress may not be the worst thing in the world. Lou Reptekis, the good senator from Coventry, is here. Uh, we invited you on a whole bunch of other things, but this happened over the weekend. You have a thought on it? Welcome, by the way. Good to see you. Thank you, Dan. Pleasure uh, to be here. Uh, thought? Well, I think it's a mess. Uh, you've got Congress trying to resolve this. You've got the president with his thoughts. I think it's just a total. You're not going to remove 800,000 uh, kids or DACA uh, individuals from, from the country. It's not going to happen. What I think you're really going to address is the core of the problem. You've got those individuals that did come here with their parents. Fine. You're not going to remove the kids and the parents. Uh, you have another issue where recently, last couple of years, where there was youngsters 12, 15, 17-year-olds coming over the border by themselves. Well, maybe that's where the addressing should take place, where those parents, if they're back in their home countries and they were sent uh, purposely, maybe that's the small segment that should be addressed. But those that did come here with their parents, uh, I, I think there's another venue to be discussed and try to resolve that problem. And I think Congress both Democrats and Republicans should sit down and find a solution. They keep making this a political football. You're not going to resolve it if it's a political football. Use common sense and try to resolve this a common sense way. Yeah, you know, I think that's the sentiment that most people have. I don't think a lot of Americans, Rhode Islanders, folks who live in the Commonwealth, want to see you know, teenagers being shipped out when they've been here for years and years and years. Is there a state solution to this? I don't think so. This is a federal program. I don't think so, no, because, again, it's a federal jurisdiction that takes precedent on this issue. And I think, look, 
Washington should be doing. This is something that they've been talking about. It also uh, has an issue, its sidebar issue is border control. They all have to work together. You're not going to resolve border control if you don't resolve this issue, illegal immigration. And it has to be set. You've got to really seriously think about it. But what really bothers me is when it becomes a political football and nothing gets done. The last eight years of the Obama administration, nothing got done. The next four years of the Trump administration, probably nothing's well, going to get done. Well, Republicans, you're a Democrat, uh, uh, but the Republicans uh, really have it on their on their chest now to do something with this, and the president more or less has kicked it over to them. And I, you know, if if you don't believe in 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 nonstop executive orders to address problems, especially in the immigration issue, which is something the president. Uh, President Obama did. I mean, he, he, he offered this executive order. Heck, he tried to get the parents protected, too, and that got stopped by the courts. This is definitely a congressional decision. You know, six months, I think, is a reasonable period of time for him to say, listen, you guys, you've got to write a law so that I don't have to continue to uh, cover and or rip out this executive order. But that's going to be worked together because Congress might pass a law. Now, is it going to be Well, if they tie it to the wall, it's dead. Exactly. And then the, the, if, if the president's not satisfied with it, he'll veto it, and then you'll have another fight about the override and overriding his veto. The core is the Democrats and the Republicans, I don't care who's the majority or the minority, sit down, work together, take the politics out of this issue, and resolve it. If you can't do that, then we've got a problem. That right. 535 members of Congress cannot resolve this issue. I agree. So the other day, switching topics altogether, the other day uh, Lou and I were talking about this on the radio because I was lamenting uh, last week that you know some kids had gone to school up pre Labor Day, some kids are starting now. It's all over the mess. It's all over the place, the schedule. We've got a headline or two here to, to kind of reflect on this. Uh, Bill aims to standardize school start date in Rhode Island. You've been working on this one. Few years. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff that you have, I would say, in the practical toolbox that you keep pounding away at. We're going to talk about all of them today. Uh, the thing I like about Senator Aptakis is that he picks the stuff that is the stuff of life, right? I mean, I, I've, never se yeah, I've never seen you come off with some crazy, wacko, philosophical, left or right you know, pet thing. You, 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 you see things and you want to fix them. But our General Assembly doesn't really have the mindset to see things that need to be fixed and just go fix them. And <laughs> fix them the right way. Right. With the school start, here, here's the bottom line, Dan. We talk about school consolidation throughout the whole state. We're going to go reduce 39 districts, or we got 35 districts, you got the regional districts. But condense them, consolidate. If you can't consolidate or pick one school opening day, for all the public schools in the state, how are you going to get to that big giant step when you can't take the little step and resolve this issue? And it comes because of several reasons. You and I talked about it. Say if you have a 12th uh, grader starting school this year and you have another child who's starting school with at URI. URI is opening today. Schools, public schools started last week and there was all different days. One school district or two started on Friday, came into school Friday, and it took Saturday, Sunday, Monday off, and then went back to school Tuesday. You prevent 16-year-olds and 17-year-olds, even 18-year-olds, from extending their job-related jobs till September 6th. We've had Labor Day start the latest on September 7th. They can get more income to pay for their school supplies or backpacks or sneakers. Then you have businesses. We talk about businesses. What We talk about sales tax. Extend the tourism season. Let the bed and breakfasts, let hotels, let restaurants make more, collect more tax to give it to the state coffers. Help those small businesses make some more money. Don't end the, the tourism season August 25th or 26th. Try to extend it another at least 10 days. There's a lot of reasons. And then uh, families can plan. When you and I went to school, did we ever second guess when school was supposed to start? No, it was the, day, it was the Wednesday after Labor Day. Correct. Make it simple. So if I have a Maybe an orientation on Tuesday if it was high school, freshman Correct. year. So if I have a youngsters in school are going to start school, a family can plan their school calendar for the next 12 years while that child is in public schools. I guess schools. some of it's the snow days and being in school to the end of June. Well, we can fix that. There's a bill that's passed that allows for a certain curriculum to actually count as a school day for at-home work during school days, correct? And do we need that full April vacation? Uh, I did make a little bit of headway. The second year, this I believe it was the third year we introduced this bill. Now they're looking at the last, making it like the last Wednesday of the, to start school, like the last week in August, pick a day. 
It's it, it's just practical common sense. Who are they? Sense. The, are the school uh, administration. Yes, yeah, school the administration it before Labor Day. Uh, yep. The uh, what is the hang up about getting it done before it, getting it, going before it, Labor Day? It, Why? I don't know. Just make it. You know the calendar. You can judge your calendar the next twenty years. Before. I think you make a really important sure. point about tourism and economics. And you, know, and you, the jobs you as a small for, business guy, I mean, you've owned the restaurant for how long now? 38 years. 38 years. My goodness. It's a long time. And But you've seen these kids that have to quit. You're probably just sitting there on Labor Day weekend going, you know, who's covering the store, the, 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 the restaurant today? Exactly. Right? I mean, it's a shame that you and we call Rhode Island the ocean state, tourism state. Look at the money that is lost in revenue to the state with the meals tax and the sales tax, but yet also the small businesses to have at least another week, 10 days worth of business. Have you, been a, had a, have you had a hearing for standardized school staff? Oh, yeah, we had, uh, this, it's going to be the third year coming up, so we're making a little headway. The Association of uh, School Superintendents, the School Committee Association, even the Teachers Union. Uh, I mean, I think if you, if you uh, take a poll with the teachers, I think they have 50-50 on this. But again, let's go back to the basics, because when you and I were growing up, the basics used to work. All right. When we come back, some basic thoughts on a couple of the dangling issues, including, you know, when you leave a kid in the car, we had that whole thing going on, the minimum wage, we'll get a stick on the paw socks. Stay with us. All right, so this is the Rep Tech, his checklist of, of things that he's working on, all of which I think are, are practical. Uh, we had this whole big to-do uh, last year about leaving kids in cars. Unattended. Unattended. On hot days and cold days. Hot days and cold days. And one of the problems, we had a story that, that ran where this woman who sees the situation happening um, calls the local police department. I don't have to name them because we don't really, it's, it's a chronic problem in the state. The police department says, well, you know, we may not come out there because there's nothing that we can, it's nothing that we can legislatively do. Under state law. Under state law. Anyway. But for animals. But for animals, they go in there and rescue the animal, charge the person who's left it. Uh, what's the latest on this, Lou? The latest is we made some headway, and I think by having the discussion with you, I was thinking of calling this the York Bill. I, I think what that's totally is, appropriate. Uh, Thank you. What we've done <laughs> is uh, we had a sub-A2 where we're scrapping the old law, not handcuffing police officers, and not handcuffing the state to collect this data. In the state law, currently, you can't report this, any law enforcement officer. So we're going to do those two things in this legislation, scrap the old bill, but giving discretion to police officers, firefighters, paramedics. Uh, well, that was the sticky wicket. There was the da what was the data part of this? Remind me. Well, we didn't know the data because in the current law. Because there's no reporting. Exactly. And there's, there's no, no record keeping or offense, or offense. Verbal from, warning from the local only. police department. It's a verbal warning, uh, which is optional. Correct. Right? Correct. But if you have a vehicle with an animal next to it, it's a $1,000 fine up to a, a misdemeanor, up to a year in jail, up to a $1,000 fine. You can have two vehicles <laughs> side by side. One has a, a child under seven years old in over 90 degree weather and another car next to it with an animal. The animal owner will get charged by state law up to a $1,000 fine and up to a year in jail. But the vehicle with a child, there is no uh, penalty at all. But what we've done in the General Assembly, both the House version and the Senate version, and I'm hoping on September 19th when the General Assembly does go back in, that we do pass this bill. It, both bills have had hearings, so there will be on the fast track. And we've addressed the main concern. Let law enforcement, public safety, firefighters, paramedics, when they approach or come up to the scene, make that determination. And then the penalties will be included afterwards. Right. So the whole big thing was with the dog, with the, with the animal thing, there's no discretion. Correct. They just have to whack them. That's right. But, you know, if a parent is, is, is got some kind of reasonable argument that they left the child in the car for 30 seconds, a minute, it's whatever, blah, 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 Up to 15 minutes. Up to 15 minutes. And a police officer reacting can come out and reasonably evaluate whether or not a charge is necessary. Correct. I mean, the common sense dictates that police officers know the difference between somebody that's just got a logistics issue and somebody that's, you know, abandoning their child. So safety for the child, that's the main focus. And you Now, will this require the, but once there's a charge, obviously there's data that's going to be collected. Exactly, here. exactly. And then we can take that data because during the hearings, we couldn't determine how many of these incidents took place in Rhode Island. Other states, yes. So basically, we hope we resolve all the concerns and get a good piece of legislation and 
I want to personally thank you for starting the discussion. This one. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just it just seemed it, it's just Captain Obvious seems to me. Uh, you think you're going to get this thing done when you guys go <coughs> back to session, or I thought you just go back and clean up some judges? Well, this will be a lot of bills. We've got a lot of bills on the table. Hmm. All right. So also on the table, you continue to pound away at minimum wage, but the other thing that is kind of coupled with that is this paid sick leave, which was in the middle, by the way, of the whole Paw Sox controversy. The difference of the bill language between the Senate and the House had Senate leadership and, you know, some of the, or the more uh, tenured senators a little miffed, which kind of affected the way Senator Ruggiero, the new president, you know, tried to pull the stop out on the House by tagging the car tax legislation with a ready day fund language piece, which caused the speaker to run out. On. This, was, this is some Playhouse 90 we had in this last session. Huh? As a veteran, you must have been thinking, oh my and gosh, what is what, going on around here, right? Again, that's what happens when all the legislation comes up at the very end of the session. When you introduce a bill, beginning of the year, there should be a 60-day time limit. You introduce the bill, you hear the bill, and you vote on the bill. If you don't do it within 60 days or 90 days, the bill dies. You'll see the rank and file start screaming and yelling when their bill, being introduced in January, doesn't get a hearing or gets a vote in committee and onto the floor and hopefully pass both yeah, chambers. Yeah, that would even things out, right? Absolutely. You'll hear a lot of rank and file What's screaming. What's the Senate President's uh, take on that? I'm not even sure, but that's the way business should be done. But going back to going this back, issue. So anyway, uh, the, the paid sick leave. Uh, it's a mess. It is a mess. Uh, I've heard from uh, business owners that have business in Rhode Island, Massachusetts. It is not working in Rhode Island. What you're doing is you're... No, it, it, a mess. It's going to be a big mess because now what no, you're no, doing it's, is... It's, it's, we don't have it in Rhode Island yet. We don't have it in Rhode Island. But it's not working where? In Massachusetts? In Massachusetts. Because, look, we've got all... We've got family time. We have several contracts and businesses. You allow sick time. But when you start mandating this and start saying that, well, businesses under over 15 uh, employees... You're going to have to give them four sick pay days. Business under 15 employees, you're going to have to give them those four sick days. Unpaid. Unpaid. But now you have all the accounting that owners and managers have to start docking, taking, okay, you work this hours, how many hours you work, two hours, we're giving you credit. It's so, certain, so many hours, up to 90 hours, I believe, or whatever the case. I don't have the bill in front of me. But here's what happens. These are use them or lose them. So at the end of the year, between December 25th and, and December 31st, if I, an individual, has four paid sick days, what do you think is going to happen that last week in December? You're going to have a, a lot of no-shows or call-outs. And in the legislation, I think you have to be sick three days in a row before you can get a doctor's notice. It is another classic Rhode Island mess. And I could see that if they had a sunset provision, let's try it out for a year or two and see if it works, and then make it standardize it and make it official they don't even do that i think being a small business owner and having this happen this is going to be a mess i know i talked to one well, business owner to, yeah he told me that we give two weeks paid vacation to our employees our employees have been there for many many years he's taken that out because he's got 500 employees right that's what, what they're going to do they're going to they're going to lessen the vacation because you know what this is always a philosophy i have never not take i've never taken a sick day not being sick and I you know and even in my my, my, my deal I think I've I've left a hundred plus sick days on the table never to be used that's just my philosophy no, it's it's again but most not people not that I'm holier than now but most people say listen if I'm gonna lose it I'm gonna use it so Correct. sniffles or not I'm heading on some vacation. of the arguments on the floor during the debate oh you can't have sick people coming into work what employee employer is going to have a sick employee coughing and sneezing, serving food to their patrons. Of course they're going to give them the, the sick day off. They've, this has become such a progressive issue where it makes nonsense. Well, the other thing that you've had uh, with uh, just practical thought about small business, I only have a few seconds here because I want to ask you about the Paw Sox, uh, the minimum wage fight, you've wanted to oh, index God. that. Well, can't we just index that and be that done That is with just, it? and now we have $15. Prove to me in Rhode Island. Well, we don't have it. It's the, yeah, it's the, they're it's trying the to demand. Get, well, let the federal government, we've argued this point, let the feds, they do all the homework for us. They determine the cost of goods and services, fuel, rent. They come out with a CPI index every year. Have the minimum wage go up every year, but let the federal government, they do all the homework. We have 
the economic survey CPI is, is done. Is Consumer Price Index. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, right. and it's shame on us that back in the 90s and early 2000s, I think it was, we had seven years of the minimum wage not going up. Shame on us. It should have went up. But what should happen is, again, we've got arguments now where we should go to 10. We are going to 1050. Well, we should go to 15. Pro what economic analysis did you do to tell me, to prove to me that in Rhode Island, in the Providence work area, we need 50, it should be $15 an hour? Imagine paying a 16-year-old dishwasher, unskilled, $15 an hour. You're going to make the pizza pretty expensive. And the McDonald's yeah. and the burger. The whole thing. All right, when we come back, uh, what Lou's sniffing around on the Paw Sox next. We're going to leave the confines of the state house. We're going to go out and hold Senate hearings, Senate finance hearings in different communities to make sure uh, that everybody in the public who wants to be heard will have a full and fair opportunity to be heard. Uh, Senator Bill Connolly talking on Newsmakers and even here too as well uh, on, on the proposal. Well, it's happening. There will be six public hearings, one at the State House and then everything else rolling around the state on the Paw Sox Stadium deal. What is your 30-second uh, take on this? Well, I think again there's, it's another mess. Look, I've always said the owners should pay for the stadium. And if you don't want the owners to pay for it, use the public-private partnership model that's used in many states to build highways, to build schools, airports. It's used in Europe. Let the private owners build it, and then after 20 years, let the state take over. Have a lease with the state. Why are we putting the public in jeopardy by taking money, taxpayers' money, from the pockets of the taxpayer and build a stadium? It should be a little of each public and private. Maybe a combination is the solution that will get a new... We have a public-private partnership right now. They're putting 45 million real-time real dollars, 73 million over time. The state's in it for an affordable note. Pawtucket's in it for an affordable note. Why do you got to make a mountain? Why don't you stick to these practical issues where you're my hero? Why do you have to screw this I'm one I'm just up? concerned. Cause Cause very concerned. Concerned about what? Well, I'm not sure how much is who's going to have the most? Is the private entity, the Paw Sox or the Red Sox, going to be paying more? Listen, these hearings ought to have some transparency. The public. The books ought to be a little bit more clearer, no doubt about I'm that. I'm worried about the bonds, the interests, interest rates. Who's going to pay all that at the end? Yeah, by the way, we have a bond right now with McCoy. Are you, you're aware of 20 that, right? years, yeah, 1995. Yeah. We passed yeah. it to renovate the stadium. It's the same formula. The numbers just adjust. Well, I think we should just keep it where it is, refurbish it, renovate it, suburban reps indication about how tough this whole thing is going to be to get past. It is. It's going to get ugly. Yeah. Well, do you have to smile when you say that? Well, got to be honest. You're always honest. Stay on the practical stuff, will you? Thanks. Lou Reptakis, ladies and gentlemen. Be right back. All right, it is school time. Don't you have that kind of you still, as a working adult, have that same back-to-school feeling after Labor Day? I always do. It's kind of refreshing, sort of. Anyway, at least there's no homework, sort of. Uh, we'll tackle all things school issues with Dan McGowan tomorrow night, and then uh, we'll focus on this DACA decision by Congress on Thursday here on the program. Okay, see you on the radio at 3 until 6 on WPRL. Thanks for watching. Good night.